Silver City Cobra. There are so many other Cobras around. The Lone Star Cobra, Don Curry. That's right. Luigi Minchilo, who comes in with a record of 42 and 2. 28 years old, began his pro career January 1977, won his first 17 fights. And there you see the tail of the tape and the big edge. Look at the height and reach advantage. That reach advantage is just tremendous. It's something that Luigi Minkillo really has to, he's got to cut it down. Here are the introductions from Jimmy Ingram. Gold Circle Productions, in association with the Do It in Detroit campaign, presents the WBC Super Welterweight Championship of the World. All bouts on this card are under the supervision of the Michigan State Athletic Board of Control Chairperson Dr. Stuart Kirschenbaum. The officials appointed for this championship match are as follows. Our judges are Cesar Ramos of Puerto Rico, Abraham Severia of Mexico, and Guy Jutras of Canada. Our referee, the third man in the ring at this time, Waldemar Smith of Puerto Rico, Waldemar Smith. Introducing, in the blue corner, he's wearing green trunks with white trim. At 153 pounds, his professional record is 42 wins, two losses. Ladies and gentlemen, from Italy, the former European junior middleweight champion, Luigi Michilo. Michilo. In the red corner, wearing gold trunks with multicolored trim. His professional record, 37 and 1. At 153 and 3 quarter pounds, ladies and gentlemen, from Detroit, Michigan, here's the WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World, the Motor City Cobra, Thomas Holmes! for 12 and Randy why don't you go over the WBC rules well for this title fight there is a 10 point must scoring system there is a three knockdown rule in effect in the case of a fighter getting knocked down there is a mandatory eight count a fighter can be saved by the bell only in the last round and in the case of a butt well then we'll go to the scorecards after the third round before the third round it's a technical draw scheduled for 12 And we are set to go. Thomas Hearns and Luigi Minkilo. Minkilo, two losses in his career, was knocked out in 1978 by Alvaro Scarpelli. Lost a 10 round decision to Roberto Duran in September of 1981. Minkilo, pretty good defensive fighter, look for him to go to the inside. Minkilo. Kilo has a lot to make up for. Something like four and a half inches shorter than Hearns and about a mile deficiency in reach. He's got to get close to Hearns from the start. Emmanuel Stewart told Randy and I that he feels that jab of Tommy Hearns is very, very important in this fight to open up that right hand. Kilo's picking off the jab thus far. That jab got through. First round, Tommy Hearns has stopped five opponents. Minkilo has stopped four. The right hand. That was a good one by Luigi Minkilo. It certainly was. It hit Hearns flush on the jaw, and he barely blinked. A lot of people asking, who is Luigi Minkilo? Why is Tommy Hearns fighting him? Luigi Minkilo wants to let some people know. jab by Tommy Hearns. Remember, this is really, this is no sniff this Minkillo. He's a former Italian champion, a former European champion. He's never been off his feet. He went the distance with Roberto Duran, and the only time he 
second stop was on a cut. There you're going to see one of the difficulties in Kilo faces, that right hand getting coming up short. Now we saw Wilfred Benitez's left hand, which is one of the best in the business. Watch the Cobra's left hand. It's amazing. Look at that jab. Good luck to the body. This is to remind our cable system down the line at the end of this round. We'll have a local break. Hearn coming on for a good right hand. Nikilo is hurt. Hearns with the left hand tries to follow up. Nikilo smiling at Hearns and covering up. Hearns with tremendous confidence right now. Part of that right taken on the gloves by Minkilo. We are late in round one. And Hearns comes out looking sharp. First fight since July 10th. Final seconds of the opening round. And we'll be right back after this break from your local cable system. One. 
if you tuned in late, Willie Edwards stopped Matthew Saad Muhammad in the 11th round at TKO to retain the North American Boxing Federation Championship, light heavyweight championship. And then Wilfred Benitez won a unanimous decision over Stacy McSwain. Watch Benitez rush Tommy Hearns here. Go after Luigi Minkilo. The left hand, the right hand, it's all coming because Tommy Hearns' jab tonight is so sharp that he's setting everything else up. And Luigi Minkilo is just awed by that right hand, awed and afraid. He doesn't want to get close to it. What he should do is get very close. He cannot hope to fight Hearns from the outside. There you see Tommy Hearns' cut man, Ralph Citro out of Blackwood, New Jersey. And could it be that Hearns already has a scratch on the side of his right eye? They're working on it. It doesn't look like it's anything that will bother him. seem to be bothering him right now. This is round three, scheduled for 12. Tommy Hearns, the super welterweight champion of the world. And Kilo with the right hand got in there. Good one by Hearns. But Minkilo is ready to mix it up. Hearns wants to back up Minkilo, and he's doing just that. Well, round number three has been the biggest round of Tommy Hearns' career. He has 10 third-round knockouts, and right now it looks like he's going to get number 11. He got a good right hand in there, but Minkilo laughed at him. Minkilo covering up as Hearns buries the attack. Upstairs and downstairs. Sam, many times. That's hit 99% of the time when a fighter laughs after getting hit. He's hurt. In the battle of the jabs, Hearns must win. He's got a decisive reach advantage. A minute gone by in the third round. Well, so far, he looks like the Motor City Cobra and the Hitman combined. Get that left hook to the body and the right uppercut. I don't know what's keeping the on his feet. Oh, no, 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 Referee did not caution Hearns, though. Hearns has got it all his way. Kilo is not doing anything to take Hearns out of his fight. Hearns burying his leads. Look at that footwork on the part of Tommy Hall. That's a beautiful combination. Beautiful. And Sam, what's this a combination? It was a footwork. Tommy Hearns is not standing in front of Mikilo, moving left and right. Mikilo trying to fight back into the left hook. Hearns smiling at Mikilo this time. Which means he got hurt. It stung a little bit. Mikilo's right hand scores as he tries to pull Hearns and lands with a right hand. Less than half a minute to go in the third round. And Mikilo's corner is imploring him. He's in his own corner. Stay there. Stay there. That's what he's doing. And he's doing a good job. on his show, but he's okay. taking a few good shots, and he yeah. feels them. A right hand by Minkilo, as he has come back strong at the end of round three. In Detroit, the super welterweight championship. Tommy Hearns, the champion, Luigi Minkilo, the challenger. Hearns in the gold, Minkilo in the green. This is round four. No knockdowns. We've seen Hearns throw everything in the arsenal, and Kilo still stands. I'm sure the WBA welterweight champion Donald Cobra Curry is watching this closely from his ringside seat, as is Sugar Ray Leonard back in Palmer Park, Maryland. How about Marvin Hagler? Oh, the marvelous one, I'm sure. He always tells me, now. I wasn't watching it. I don't even care about Hearns. Kilo got in that counter right hand. And of course, the other champion is not too concerned about fighting Thomas Hearns, the WBC champion, because he's Tommy Hearns' stablemate, Milton the Iceman LaFleur. Oh, yeah, he got hurt again. Tommy Hearns moved out of there and gave him a 
big rim, but that was a solid punch by Mentillo. Sutherland, Sutherland, the late replacement for James Hard Rock Green in a non-title bout. And I would say about the fifth round, Tommy Hearns hurt his right hand and uh, fought the rest of that fight exclusively with the left. Or just about the rest of the way with the left. Nice spin out by Tommy Hearns. And in that fight last July 10th, he got up to this kind of start against Hard Rock, who also has a, a real solid chin. And then Tommy tired badly in the fight that cut around both eyes. Hardy came on very strong. He got a question with Michillo. We can, we, we can tell he's never been down before. Is he going to come on strong? Unless, Unfortunately for Michillo, that reach is just too short. He's missing with those, those hooks. The quickness of Hearns is uh, shown as he backs away. Michillo's got to charge in there and try and mix it up in the inside. Look, under the left eye of Luigi Minkilo. Under half a minute to go in the fourth round. Scheduled for 12. Some nice defense on the part of Thomas Hearns. He's just moving his head to the right and to the left. And Minkilo came. Not land a punch. Just missed. Hearns starting to pick it up with the jab and follows with a chopping right. That's a very nice Round four. Into the corner of Tommy Hearns, Emmanuel Stewart, his trainer and manager. I'm looking at the right hand. You haven't taken the to the right hand. Well, you see what Tommy Hearns says. He needs to win impressively. Thus far, he looks good. But we haven't seen that hitman power. As an amateur, Tommy Hearns won 155 fights and lost only eight. And Sam, this is going to come as a shock to a lot of people. Out of those 155 victories, he knocked out only 12 opponents. Right. It wasn't until he became a pro that he started learning leverage. But I think now, as he's stepped up in weight, he's lost a little bit of power. He's really not the hitman that he was early in his career when he was knocking everybody out with one. Look, look at that. That's a nice crowd. And the people of Detroit have uh, reason to be proud. Certainly the mayor has been smiling all night across the way. He got involved uh, totally in this promotion. They feel uh, it will help the image of Detroit. They want people to feel and know that Detroit is alive. And certainly there's a lot of life in this arena tonight. couple of rounds didn't get it. Now is settled down to box. Left hook and that hurt Minkilo. The body hurts follows nicely. Oh, Hearns is loading up for a one-punch knockout. It seems like that's what he's doing. He had Minkilo hurt. You're absolutely right. Burns is looking for that one shot with either hand. Just one shot. Good jab now by Hearns. Oh, and he's hitting Minkillo to the body with a jab the way he did a heavy bat. Plus a guard. Minkillo keeps coming, and the jab keeps stinging him. Hearns ties him up. Midway through the fifth round. No knockdowns in this fight. Luigi Minkilo, policeman from Italy, goes after Hearns and scores. Well, that has never been Tommy's fight on the inside. Why he's doing that is beyond me. Why he's standing, standing up against the ropes is a surprise. That's where Minkilo is at his best. Tommy can't do himself anything but no good on the ropes. He can get on the ropes, caught on the 
the ropes. He's got four and a half inches in height. How about left hand? And about five inches in reach. He should be doing just what he's doing. Outside now, that's wrong. This is to remind our cable systems down the line. At the end of this round, we'll have a local break. Kilo crowding Hearns, which is his game plan. He lands with both hands. But Kilo, Hearns answers back with a right. Tommy was about to start talking to him in Kilo. He started saying something. Then he realized, hey, this guy doesn't speak English. Jab by Hearns. Final seconds, round five. We'll be right back after this break from your local cable system. Tieni sulle mani, non te ne devi approfittare, però è qui che voglio che mi stai a sentire, in questo momento. Qualche volta se vai fuori non è male, capito? Girando lì fuori, eh? Hai capito? Ti raccomando, la vita è le mani del sempre. Sam Rosen and Randy Gordon, ringside at Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit. This is round six, scheduled for 12, the WBC Super Welterweight Championship on the line. With the champion Tommy Hearns going against Luigi Minchilo of Italy. And Minchilo has been tough. Oh, has he been tough? In the first round, he was nearly out of there. And it really looked like he was going to go. In the second round, he got wobbled. And in the third round, but then he started turning it on. And Tommy Hearns hasn't been doing as much work with the right hand. Nice jab. And you have to wonder, is the right hand giving him trouble? Is he it hurting again? Let's watch it from here on in. See, I think he's trying to just set up that one big right hand with the jab. Look at the jab he's throwing. Hearns is throwing a very quick cobra-like rough jab. But if he's saving that right hand, it could be that he doesn't want to throw it because it does pain him. We'll see. There's the right. Good one. Straight right hand by Hearns. throws it to the body if it's hurting. I doubt it's hurting now. What I think he's just trying to do is save it. He's doing okay with his left jab. He's painting him up and down. Nice combination. A glancing right hand, though, by Hearns to the side of the head of his kilo. Look what he's doing with that jab. He's converting it into a hook. by Thomas Hearns. He's got some of the fastest hands in the welterweight, junior middleweight, or middleweight division. A very picturesque, pretty combination. He just lets him go, and he rocked Minkilio with it. Started with the right, 
regain himself and then lets both hands go. And again. And look at Tommy drive that right hand to the body. Bell for round seven. Neither fighter has been down. Certainly the detractors of Tommy Hearns have to be saying, well, look, he can't take out Luigi Minkilo. Who's this Luigi Minkilo? Minkilo's been tough. Give him that much. He's a game fighter. Not too much known about him. He did go 10 with Roberto Duran a couple of years ago. Well, those people who say he can't take out Luigi Minkilo, I say, who has taken out Luigi Minkilo? But Hearns has fought a good fight. He has looked good. Tommy left himself wide open that time. His chin was way up in the air when he threw the right hand to the body. A man with faster hands might have countered it with a hook. A Kilo. Sugar Ray Leonard. I agree. Kilo scored earlier with that looping right hand, but didn't have much on it. At this point, I think when Kilo has to do... If you remember, former middleweight champion Vito Anafermo, he's just got to get in close. He's got a street fight now. Burns with picture shots with that jab in the right hand behind it. And Kilo keeps coming. Oh, that jab. That is some kind of punch. We're midway through the seventh round. Well, those young fighters out there, that is a jab. Those hours on the heavy bag, on the mix. to Luigi Minkilo because he knows the only people really rooting for him are the two guys in his corner. Burns with a relatively quiet round thus far. Intended to use the jam mostly. Now going to the body with uppercuts. Half a minute to go. Round left eye of Minkilo is swelling, starting to close. And I can't believe it's taken this long with the amount of shots he has taken. The jab has been in his face throughout the fight. Burns slowing down just a little bit. Just a little bit. End of the seventh. Scheduled for 12. This is the Super Welterweight Championship for the WBC. The champion, Tommy Hearns, defending against Luigi Minkilo. Neither man is down in the fight. Minkilo's left eye is closing rapidly. I'd say he's got maybe this round and the next round. By the end of the ninth round, if there is a ninth round, that eye will be closed. Because Tommy's zeroing in on the eye now. He sees it, and I think every shot is going to the left eye. Burns has had a sharp jab, which is one thing they were hoping for tonight, and he's done well with it. The right hand scores for Tommy Hearns. We have not noticed that he's experiencing any pain with that right hand.
remember when he won the title from Wilfred Benitez in December 82, he took seven months off and then Fort Murray Sutherland. And it was just like this, about this round, he started a tire. Now, after another seven-month layoff, he's looked great for seven rounds, and once again, the, he's starting to run down just a little bit. Right hand is landed. The body shot that time. That's a nice combination. Halo keeps coming. Burns ripping that right to the body, and again, great body shot. He's landing from all angles now, and Halo backs up, and we haven't seen that too much. And Halo grimacing from what appeared to be a kidney punch. The shot, as he was moving back, the shot hit him. I believe it in a legal area, like back towards the kidneys. And that's a debilitating blow. Big right hand by Hearns as he is opened up. <laughs> Referee Waldemar Schmidt of Puerto Rico has got his work cut out for him now, because this is turning into a very rough fight. Hearns has ripped body shots in this round. He ties up Minkilo on the inside. As we come to the bell, ending round eight. No, 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 Try and control that swelling, or at least slow it down a little bit. That left eye is closing up rapidly on Luigi Minkilo. And he's got a problem with the eye, and I think he's going to slow down a little. Look at these body shots. That one was a little bit low, the left hook. Another one to the side by Tommy Harnes. He concentrated his strong attack that round on the body. And a right hand to the side of Minkilo, which may have been a little to the back. You felt it was a legal punch. Really hurt Minkilo. They continue to work on that little nick. It has not opened up. We haven't seen blood. This seems to be a little bit of an abrasion over the right eye of Tommy Hearns. Set for round nine, and Hearns is starting to open up a lead in this fight. It's scheduled for 12. Minkilo has to come in, moving that head, moving his shoulders, bending at the knees. Because if he comes straight in, Tommy's just going to pick him apart like that with the jab all night long. 28-year-old Luigi Minkilo from Italy, the former European junior middleweight champion and now the number one contender in Europe. He continues to get his head snapped back by that sharp jab of Tommy Hearns. Hearns moving well again.
just got too much reach for him, too much jab for Minkilo. Minkilo keeps coming. He certainly made a fight out of it, that's for sure. Takes the left hand in there. Final seconds, round nine. We'll be right back after this break from your local cable system. Randy Gordon ringside at the Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit. You're watching the WBC Super Welterweight Championship. The champion Tommy Hearns, the challenger Luigi Minkilo. This is round 10 scheduled for 12. Neither fighter has been down. So it's turned into a one-sided fight for Tommy Hearns. Still up on his toes and still moving well. Tommy cannot afford to get careless on my unofficial scorecard. He's way out in front, yet Luigi Minkilo just keeps coming and coming. Left hook got in by Minkilo, but Hearns countered nicely with a hook of his own. Because Minkilo has no real style, as we talked about. You just never know what he's going to do next. That overhand left and overhand right, it hurts underneath, he mauls it. Now there he tried to get inside, but the fast hands of Hearns stopped him. And that's been the difference again. The reach, the good jab, and the quick hands of Tommy Hearns. wasn't even a smile that time by Tommy Hearns. He felt it. Late in a fight like this, you don't want to go down. You might be too tired to get up. As you said, you can't get careless. Kilo opening up his arms saying, come on, what's this pushing business? Right, he said, I want to fight on the inside. Come on, let's rumble here. of Tommy Hearns will say, why hasn't he been able to put down Luigi Minkilo? Where is the Tommy Hearns power? Oh, you're looking at it. You're just looking at one of the toughest humans I've ever seen. Less than a minute to go. Round 10. Hearns ripping shots. Minkilo taking. And keeps coming. Sam, some of those other welterweights and junior middleweights out there have got to be saying, wow, I'm glad it's not me taking those shots. Look at them trying to muscle each other as Mearns try to shove Minkilo back. You saw the strength of Luigi. Tommy couldn't budge him. Straight left by Minkilo, and again the hook by Minkilo. The right hand by Hearns was very low again. No bell. Both guys thought they heard the bell, and Waldemar Schmidt thought he heard the bell. According to Milo, is running around the ring. He thought that that Hearns had quit. He thought he had won the fight. Hearns had gone back into the corner, thinking that the round was over. No, according to my stopwatch, it was the timekeeper was correct. I don't know what was on Luigi's mind. Maybe those left hooks he took shook him up more than we thought. The manager of Luigi Minkilo complaining to the referee. He said that, that Hearns stopped fighting. He felt Hearns quit. Right there, he felt that Hearns had quit the fight. But Hearns, I believe, felt the round was over. He ah, thought the round was over. Emmanuel Stewart was starting to bring the stool in. There was some confusion there. And as a matter of fact, Waldemar Schmidt wasn't even sure. He didn't hear the bell, but he looked down towards the timekeeper, and there was still about three seconds to go in the round. Burns set to come out for round 11. There's the bell. They were ready to start before the bell rang. I think 
if Waldemar Schmidt is mad at the timekeeper. He just waved his arms like, go. He didn't even wait for the bell. It's a new rule on Waldemar Schmidt's part. <laughs> it's, it's right when I drop my hands. Showboating. 
certainly uh, acknowledging uh, the fight of his opponent. Now Jimmy Ingram has the official decision. Boxing fans, here is the decision of the judges. Judge Severia of Mexico scores 1984. What's it going to be like? Uh, we're looking at future-wise, a uh, possible fight with Marvin Hagler and maybe even a fight with Roberto Duran. But he should have at least two big fights before the year is up. How about, the, Thomas, I was with Sugar Ray Leonard a couple weeks ago, and he's made it public. He said, I'll fight everybody out there. Tommy Hearns can wait in line. What do you say about that? I knew I was going to be in the way. That's why I'm not waiting on a Ray Leonard. I'm going with my program. It's, it's going to make sense to me to sit back and try to wait on uh, Leonard to make up his mind whether he want to fight me again or not. Now, one big question that everybody had about you coming into the fight, your right hand, which you hurt against Benitez, you hurt again against Murray Sullivan. Obviously, nothing's wrong with it now. No, I, it's no problem with my right hand now. I'm able to get out there and put it out there, shoot as hard as I want, and not have any problem. Okay, talk a little bit. 